Proverbs 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. So here I think James is bringing up two completely separate, uh, well, I don't know, I guess they're not completely separate. They could be separate issues, you know, not being teachers, but he's saying the reason not many should be teachers is because you make mistakes, you say things wrong, uh, and you'll be held to a higher standard. Uh, because you're standing in front of other people teaching and you would be the one responsible for someone else believing a lie. Uh, so I guess they're not, it, it is two different issues, but they're also related. Uh, so I, I wonder if people actually take this, uh, how people take this verse one, let not many of you become teachers. For in a sense, we're all supposed to always be teachers by our actions and by what we do, how we live our life, by what other people see in us. We're all that kind of teacher, but I don't think that's what he's talking about. I think he's, what he's talking about is someone who uh, regularly stands up before multitudes of people and teaches uh, God's perspective on life. Uh, there are many complex things about God uh, and who he is and how he interacts with us and when you stand before people teaching um, I guess if anybody was watching my videos then, <laughs> then there would be a lot of people that could be influenced by what I say but it's right now it seems like I'm only talking to myself <laughs> um, we stumble in many ways uh, and everybody makes mistakes in what they say and if you can keep your uh, what you say in check then you can keep your whole body in check and I think the in indication there is you, we can't keep our tongue in check so we can't keep our whole body in check either when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. Well, that's a pretty aggressive way to describe this, the tongue uh, and words that come out of your mouth. Uh, you know, I've always thought that this was a little bit aggressive, or maybe a little too aggressive, uh, but it's probably just because I don't fully grasp uh, what it actually means. Because I've... I have said curse words, uh, but that's not something to regularly have a problem with. But certainly, uh, if you fail in one point, you fail in the whole thing. So, uh, also, but this is not just talking about curse words. This is talking about how you talk to your neighbor. How do you talk? Are you quick-tempered? Do you spout off at the mouth quickly? Do you... Uh, say things that are selfish or demeaning or and certainly my mouth and my tongue is not perfect along those lines all kinds of animals birds reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind but no human being can tame the tongue it is a restless evil full of deadly poison now that's interesting it says no human can tame the tongue not a single one we can tame all sorts of animals but not a single person can control and have a perfect tongue oh. it is a restless evil full of deadly poison our mouths what we say is continuously letting us down and being uh, a 
bad representative of who we want to be. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings. Again, see, that's what people have this desire to praise God, but they want to be evil and ugly to people. Uh, and that's just contrary to pleasing God and to doing what you want to do to please God. Because the very evidence of how you love God is displayed in how you treat your neighbor and your fellow human beings. But we don't like to treat each other with the same kind of love that we say that we have for God or for Jesus or even for ourselves. We have to learn it's a very crucial and critical point uh, as a Christian and how to live as a Christian is that the, one of the primary focal points of how a Christian should live is evidenced by the way you treat other people, by the way you talk to other people, by the way you serve other people. Who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So, this spring, either you know, you can't have a spring producing two different kinds of water, salt water and fresh water. And it says, we shouldn't have blessings and cursings coming out of our mouth. Uh, so, in a sense... You know, what kind of spring do you have? I would assume, let's just assume that the fresh water would be godly speech and salt water would be evil speech. You can't have both coming out of your mouth. It's impossible. We ought to only have fresh water come out of our mouth, but what kind of spring do you have it's most likely a salt spring that the, what wells up inside of you is the salt is the unfresh spring unfresh water um, that's why not many should be teachers because we all fail in many points and the tongue is a restless evil and we often say things that are not right and we, I mean, I have believed, if just what I've believed, if I've been a teacher, uh, which I guess I have been teaching from my own perspective, but not a public teacher uh, my whole life. But if I had been teaching what I believed all along, I would have been teaching people things that I currently disagree with because I've changed my mind on so many different things. So... Could I go back and correct everything that I ever said to all the people before when I believe something different than I believe now? Now I think there's a core fundamental foundational principles that I still believe in that are the same as before. But when you get into the details, uh, there has been many changes. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. So, whoever is wise and understanding, you don't need to let them tell you how wise and understanding they are. They don't have to stand up in front of multitudes of people and convince them that this is a wise and understanding person. It should be demonstrated by how they live their life, uh, by humility and self-sacrifice that's how we should see and respect people by by their deeds by their actions by what they do and how, by how they treat other people not because of what they say from a pulpit but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast about it or deny the truth such wisdom does not come down from heaven but is earthly unspiritual demonic Okay, so the good kind of wisdom, the true wisdom, comes down from heaven. 
God is the one who supplies the wisdom, the good wisdom, the true wisdom. But any other wisdom is either comes from the source of earth, from the flesh, or from the demons. So there is good wisdom that comes directly from God as a gift from God that opens our mind and instills wisdom and knowledge in our minds or in our bodies. Any other kind of wisdom, any false wisdom, is a selfish, earthly, uh, maybe human reasoning or something that's developed through the flesh or something that demons... Uh, deceive you to believe for where you have envy and selfish ambition there you find disorder and every evil practice but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure then peace loving considerate submissive full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere okay so this describes the kind of wisdom that comes from heaven that is a gift from God. It's pure, peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. So when God gives you true wisdom as a gift from heaven, these are the kinds of things that you could would display through your wisdom. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness all right so let's not forget that god is the giver of wisdom that god is the one if we have any truth or knowledge or wisdom or if we have anything good god is the source of it god provides it it is a direct gift from god because anything that we derive on our own is going to be evil it's going to be earthly, unspiritual, or demonic. But anything that we receive that is good and true and pure and peace-loving, etc., then that is a true, direct gift from God. We do not obtain these sort of things independent of God's direct blessing. This way we can know where who deserves the praise, and it's God who deserves the praise for any wisdom.